Hi, I'm Henry. And I'm Lily from the Peer Advisory League, also known as PAL, and welcome to the transcript. This week, the transcript looks into the gun control debate and how it is affecting Massachusetts. Hemmed up talks to the field hockey team and Eli and Christian take over Booster Week. On Saturday, a double truck bombing killed over 270 people and injured over 300 in the capital of Somalia. Although no one has claimed responsibility for the attack, analysts suspect Al-Shabaab, a militant terrorist group based in Somalia that has allegiance to groups such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS. The attacks are suspected to be in retaliation for recent losses in territory and U.S. drone strikes. On Tuesday, American-backed forces announced that they had seized the Syrian city of Raqqa from ISIS. ISIS had used the city as their capital since the caliphate was declared. Citizens had been living under ISIS rule since early 2014. The fight for the control of Raqqa displaced over 270,000 residents, and an estimated 1,000 civilians were killed by U.S. airstrikes. A bipartisan effort to address issues within the national health care system has stalled this week. Last week, President Trump signed an executive order to end payments to health insurers that allow low-income Americans to receive health care and provide for certain guaranteed benefits. The compromise proposed by Senators Lamar Alexander and Patty Murray would continue these payments for two years in exchange for allowing states more flexibility in regulating coverage. However, both House Speaker Paul Ryan and President Trump have expressed their disapproval of the bill. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo. Welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. On October 1st, a gunman opened fire on a country music festival in Las Vegas from his hotel room overlooking the concert. The shooting was the deadliest in modern U.S. history, leaving about 59 people dead and more than 520 injured. Since the shooting, many politicians and outside groups have advocated taking a new look at U.S. gun control laws. This week, on Tell It Like It Is, we're taking a look into our own state's gun laws. In 2014, Massachusetts lawmakers overhauled the state's gun laws and decided to make gun regulations stricter to gun buyers by tightening up background checks. But despite the efforts of Massachusetts lawmakers to stiffen firearm laws and curb gun violence, many argue that these laws aren't enough on their own. I think Massachusetts is one of the more stricter. Uh, we have more stringent gun require, you know, gun laws um, requiring uh, certain things for licensure as well as what you can and cannot um, possess legally as a citizen. Consequently, deadly mass shootings have prompted national discussions about gun control, mental health, and the possible legislative efforts to prevent future massacres. So I'm for being, people being able to possess firearms. You know, I wish there was a, a fix-all to these mass shootings, but there's always someone who's going to find their way around it. You know, the guy in Las Vegas had zero criminal record, passed all the background checks in multiple states to buy all the firearms that he had. I don't know, I don't know how you stop that. You know, I, I wish there was, because if there was, then there wouldn't be this many people hurting. People with mental illnesses or mental disabilities shouldn't be able to possess firearms. But there's no way you're going to know that unless you get their medical records. And federal law, the HIPAA Act, prohibits you from seeing their medical records. So. There's, there's all of these catch, catches. Some changes sought by Democrats include universal background checks before purchasing a gun and banning bump stocks. Last week, both the Massachusetts House and the Senate voted in favor of a ban on bump stocks, and the governor, Charlie Baker, has said he will sign the bill. The bump stock makes it a semi-automatic, which you pull the trigger once, one bullet comes out. Um, the bump stock makes it so that you you technically, your hand, whole hand moves, pulling the trigger every time, but it makes it a fully automatic weapon. Um, they're looking at outlawing that, <clears throat> which I can totally support because, like I said, there's no reason to have that. Even though Massachusetts ranks number three in the nation for the toughest states for gun owners, according to Boston Glove, many argue the laws are still ineffective in curbing gun violence, and many organizations are determined to keep taking on gun control in the state. I'm Flor Castillo. Thanks for watching Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. 
Welcome to Hamped Up Field Hockey Edition. Y'all ready for this? Being left-handed in 2017, you'd really think some company would clutch up and start making left-handed field hockey sticks, but it hasn't been done. In order to emphasize, I asked Liv Lombardi about America's biggest flaw. How has being a natural left-handed citizen on the field hockey team affected your social life and or grades? I'm right-handed. The MIAA handbook states that if one sport is not offered for both boys and girls, then all genders may play on that one team. In this case, there are two boys currently on the JV field hockey team, both of whom are right-handed. This week, I sat down with Tucker Shaw Merrigan on what it's like playing for the field hockey team. All right, so you've been playing hockey for six years now, starting in fourth grade. Do you have plans to play later on in high school? Yeah, I'm still planning on playing for junior and senior year. I don't really know what's going to happen for college or anything like that. I hope to make varsity next year and maybe captain senior year. What's the biggest challenge you face playing for the high school on the field hockey team? Well, other than playing with a skirt, nothing's really been different. Uh, what pushed you to start playing field hockey? Well, other than my mom playing in high school and kind of like bringing me up playing, uh, there was a after school program at my elementary school that I kind of got interested when I signed up for that. I also sat down with Lily LB about her last year playing for the high school. So right now your record is 4-6-2, six, and two, and three wins and one tie is needed to advance to playoffs. What are the odds of that happening? I think our odds are rather high. I think we have a game on uh, Wednesday, and I think we can definitely keep the tie. You and two other seniors, uh, Abby Baldwin and Anna Kerwood, shout out, switched from soccer to field hockey your sophomore years. What made you make the change? I was actually cut from the soccer program my sophomore year, and so I, like, not want to do a sport at all and my mom made me choose between cross country or field hockey and I chose field hockey. And In other sports news, both boys and girls cross country teams as well as the girls soccer team are all riding in first place in their divisions. The boys soccer team almost did win on Monday but they didn't, giving them a 1 in 12 record. The football team has their final home game tonight at 7 o'clock. Also, congratulations to the golf team for finishing their season this week. Their final record is 7 and 10. Thanks for watching Hamped Up, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Ayo! Welcome to the other stuff. It's Booster Week! Yes! Booster Week is finally here! Under the old system, the class of 2018 hasn't done so well. But there's a new system, and we think we got a shot. So in the last few years, the way that the money has worked is, is the winning team got about $500. Second place uh, grade would get 250, third place 150, and the fourth place team would get 100, basically 50, 25, 15, 10 percent. And that's based on the fo flag football game revenue. So this year they're looking to change it and they want to um, make a system where the seniors get the majority of the money, if not all of it. It's still being worked out the kinks. This year we're in it to win it. So right now, we've got some tips so every member of the senior class can contribute to our victory. First step, trash talk the other grades. All right, guys, who do you think is going to win Booster Week this, this, uh, this year? Freshman. Junior. Whoa! Really, freshman? Candyland? More like Candy do a handstand. Sophomores have winter. Did you know that people get more depressed during the winter? You like that? Ooh, and the juniors have Disney. Too bad Disney constantly reminds us that dreams don't come true, animals can't talk, you'll never be a princess, magic isn't real, your childhood isn't forever, and life might be entirely void of meaning. Second step, participate in the lunch games. <laughs> if you're not any good, practice at home first. Woo! Step three, practice for the pep rally. But in order to save time, do all the games at once. Woo! 
final step, keep up the high energy all the time. Booster Week is a lovely tradition. Have fun at the pep rally today. Thanks for watching. PAL is here to help incoming freshmen with the transition to high school and any academic issues. If you are looking for an individual PAL mentor, please talk to your guidance counselor. And remember to remind your teachers to show the transcript every Friday morning at nhstechnology.org.